the retrograde motion of the heavenly bodies prove that the earth is stationary. From Encyclopedia Britannica, it says, Retrograde motion in astronomy, actual or apparent motion of a body in a direction opposite to that of the direct motions of most members of the solar system or other astronomical systems with a preferred direction of motion as viewed from a position in space north of the solar system from some great distance above the earth north pole all the major planets revolve counterclockwise around the sun and all but venus and uranus rotate counterclockwise on their own axis these two, therefore, have retrograde rotation. Today, they use Kepler's laws of planetary motion to explain our solar system. Again, from the Encyc Encyclopedia Britannica, it says Kepler's laws of planetary motion in astronomy and classical physics, laws describing the motions of the planets in the solar system. They were derived by the German astronomer Johannes Kepler, whose analysis of the observations of the 16th century Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe enabled him to announce his first two laws in the year 1609 and a third law nearly a decade later in 1618. Kepler himself never numbered these laws or specially dis distinguished them from his other discoveries. Okay, thanks for your honesty. So somebody came along uh, probably hundreds of years later and went through his books and decided to make them law. Kepler's three laws of planetary motion can be stated as follows. 1. All planets move about the Sun in elliptical orbits having the Sun as one of the foci. 2. A radius vector joining any other planet to the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal length of time. 3. The squares of the sidereal periods of revolution of the planets are directly, directly proportional to the cubes of their mean distances from the Sun. Knowledge of these laws, especially the second, the law of areas, proved crucial to Sir Isaac Newton in 1684-85 when he formulated his famous law of gravitation between Earth and the Moon and between the Sun and the planets postulated by him to have validity for all objects anywhere in the universe. Newton showed that the motions of bodies subject to central gravitational force need not always follow the elliptical orbits specified by the first law of Kepler, but can take paths defined by other open conic curves the motion can be in parabolic or hyperbolic orbits depending on the total energy of the body. Thus, an object of sufficient energy, e.g. a comet, can enter the solar system 
and leave again without returning. From Kepler's second law, it may be observed further that the angular momentum of any planet about an axis through the Sun and perpendicular to the orbital plane is also unchanging. So here we have Newton debunking uh, all of Kepler's work. The heliocentric model is all made up. It's, uh, it's, it's more or less science fiction than reality. In the heliocentric model, gravity has to be very selective. For example, the planet Venus can retrograde right next to the Sun when the powerful gravitational pull of the Sun on Venus should make it prograde. Similarly, the gravitational force would be weaker on the planet Uranus as it is further from the Sun. As the Sun is the largest mass in our solar system, then surely it should influence all of the planets in the same way, i.e. all of the planets should prograde and spin in the same direction as the Sun. As depicted by this GIF, retrograde motions of the wandering stars or planets are simply just circular paths of these bodies in the sky. Nothing more is needed to explain this. This is because the Earth is stationary and everything in the sky revolves around us.